Hey there do-it-yourself technicians. This week was my 25th wedding anniversary. Yep, 25 years ago I married my darling wife Bernie. And that got me feeling just a little bit nostalgic. So I went out to the back shed and dragged out this old beastie. Where it all started. The Tandy colour computer that my brother bought home in 1980. I was eight years of age. This is what started my interest in computers. From these manuals, I taught myself to program in BASIC, and that's where my love of computers started. If you were looking for specs, this machine has a Motorola 6809E processor that I believe ran at 1 MHz, and a whopping 16K of RAM, which I later upgraded to 64K. When we got it, it came with just the computer itself with a built-in power lead, and a coax cable that plugged into the TV's antenna port. You then tuned the TV to the right station to make it work with the computer. I didn't even know how that was going to go trying to get it to work on a modern smart TV, but it wasn't too bad. I plugged it in, did a channel search, and up it popped. Amazing. So it was just the computer, the TV, and the manuals. We had no storage, no nothing. If you wanted a program, you typed it in yourself. That was how it started for me digging around, working out what did what, how to do things, and programming everything for myself. This machine was so basic, it didn't even have an LED to tell you that it was on. That was something I installed later. My first ever hardware modification. You can see it there in the top right corner above the keys. My second attempt at a hardware modification didn't go so well. We were attempting to install a inverse switch. I guess the original dark mode when I accidentally snapped one of the legs off the SAM chip, the graphics display chip at the time. Since then, the machine has been stuck in dark mode, which does odd things to high-res graphics and something I'm looking at fixing if I can. Sometime around 1985, 1986, I actually wrote a couple of programs to teach the basics of science, which I submitted to the Science Talent Search for the Science Teachers Association of Victoria. It first won the school competition and then went through to the state finals. You can actually see on the back all of the letter coding that I put on as an early teenager because my sister had to take it and set it up for the final judging component because I was away with my parents at the time. And my older sister took it all in, set it all up and displayed it for the judges to see. I think it won an honourable mention that was a $10 prize. Mind you, that $10 is probably worth hundreds and hundreds of dollars in today's money. In fact, it was at that time that I started to hit the 16K limit with some of the graphics I was using, and that was part of the reason I went for the upgrade to 64K. By this time, we'd bought a tape deck that I used to save all of my programs onto, and you could hear the audible whirring and clicking as the analog tape saved and reloaded the programs. It was amazing. Not dissimilar to the sounds from a dial-up modem, but most people wouldn't remember that either. Some years later, I also found Australian Coco magazine, the magazine for Australian colour computer users, which I even wrote a few articles for in 1987, 88, that sort of time frame. My first ever published works. I went to a couple of their conferences and met some amazing people who, to this day, have had a huge impact on my career and computing love. If there's interest, you may see more from my beloved old Coco as I go try and fix it up, make the keyboard work better, because it was always pretty clunky. 30-something years of dust have not helped it at all. Yeah, that's right. Next year, this computer will be 40 years old. Wonder if I can enter it in some sort of master's event. Probably a museum. And in the process of researching this, I've actually found quite a few archives and Facebook groups where there were people interested in the old Tandy colour computer. I can't believe there's still fans out there. Oh, and it's worth noting, I flipped it over and checked out the serial number. 1101. I don't know whether they're in binary or whether we just got the 1101st model off the production line. And I suppose I'd be remiss not to thank my big brother for buying it in the first place. It was actually his computer. I was only eight. He bought it because he had an interest in computers and then actually went on to a career in computing. He's another one of those people I'm thankful for getting me into this industry. Anyway, enough nostalgia for now. The Tech Doctor exists to help you become your own technician and navigate your technology maze. If you like this episode, leave a comment down below and let me know what your first computer was. 
If you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button down here. To subscribe to our mailing list, there's a button up further, and there's some other episodes you may not have seen before here and here. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.